Hi, today we're going to talk about a healthy blood pressure and that is so important because if your blood pressure is too high, your heart takes a pounding. It's hard on your kidneys. It's hard on all of your body. So how do you have a healthy blood pressure and, and what does it mean? Well, hypertension means too much pressure in the arteries and it's usually reported as two numbers like 120 over 80. Well, that first number, the 120, that's called systolic blood pressure. And that means the pressure that is in your arteries during a heartbeat. The second number, that 80, that's called diastolic. And that's the pressure between the beats when your heart is relaxing. So your blood pressure goes up to 120, down to 80, up to 120, down to 80 with each beat of the heart. Make sense? Now, an ideal blood pressure is anything below about 120 over 80. How do I get there? Well, if your blood pressure is too high, the first step that your doctor probably told you about was to reduce salt, sodium. And doing that's a good idea. If you get down to two grams of sodium per day, or one and a half grams, which some of them are now saying, well, that will reduce your blood pressure a little bit. Now, that's not much salt. That's less than a teaspoon per day. Many people, though, are a little bit disappointed. They lower their salt intake and their blood pressure doesn't fall very far. So go a little bit further. If you pump up the vegetables and fruits, they don't have much sodium. They have a lot of potassium and potassium helps lower your blood pressure. So lower salt, high vegetables and fruits. But you know, fatty foods play a part here too. And it seems like we've been talking about fatty foods for so many things. Well, when people get away from fat, their blood pressure falls. How can that be? When I was a kid growing up, my mother used to cook bacon for her five kids. She would take the hot bacon strips out of the pan and she'd put them on a paper towel to drain and then she would take that hot pan filled with grease and pour it into a jar to save the bacon grease. But you know, she didn't put that jar in the refrigerator. She just put it on the shelf because she knew that as that bacon grease cools down, what happens? It turns into a solid fat and you don't need to refrigerate that. Well, in your body, that solid fat does something to the viscosity of your blood, the thickness of your blood. What I mean is if you're eating a lot of animal fat and I measure your blo a blood sample, it's actually more viscous, more thick, more like oil, less like water than it ought to be. If on the other hand, you get the meat and cheese and fatty foods out of your diet, what happens? Your blood viscosity improves. Your blood flows more like water, less like grease. That's good for a lot of things. Athletes say, you know, this gives me more energy. But a person with high blood pressure says, you know, my blood pressure is coming down. So get away from the fatty foods. Your blood viscosity, your blood thickness drops a little bit. That's good. Weight loss helps. That's obvious. If you're not carrying around so much weight, it's pretty easy to get the blood to flow through your body without a lot of pressure and exercise helps too. Now let me zero in for just a minute on a study called the DASH study. This was the Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension Study, DASH. And in the first part of the study, they compared a control group, people following their normal diet, to a group they called the fruits and vegetables group. They asked them to eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. So look at the numbers. The group that was asked to eat more fruits and vegetables really did a lot more fruits, more vegetables, and not much in the way of other changes in their diet. But if we looked at what happened, because they were eating a lot of fruits and vegetables, their systolic blood pressure dropped by a good seven points and their diastolic pressure almost three points. So the lesson here is bringing in those fruits and vegetables is good. But then they went a step further and they asked a third group to follow something they called the DASH diet. And it had a lot of fruits and a lot of vegetables, but it also cut back on the meat. You see that down there? And the oils were reduced as well. And when you put that together, what happened? Well, their systolic blood pressure was cut by a good 11 points and their diastolic pressure was cut by about five points. So what this shows us, is that boosting the vegetables and fruits, that's good. That's about half the power of the DASH diet. But reducing the fatty foods, the meats, the oils, that's the other half. You put that together, you've got a good recipe. So let's review. To reduce our blood pressure, we want to reduce sodium. That means cut back on salt. And you can increase potassium simply by bringing the vegetables and fruits into our diet. And if you reduce the bad fats, get away from animal fats, keep all oils really low. That has a really good effect on our blood viscosity. Weight loss is good. Exercise is good and you put it all together, you can have a healthy blood pressure. Thanks a lot.